many of you have ever been outside in the dark uh, and, and stayed out there in the dark until it was full daylight, like throughout the entire dawn? I mean, I'm talking about being out like camping somewhere where there's no light pollution and you're in pitch darkness and then you stay out there until it's daylight. It's an amazing process because it, and it's hard to explain to someone who hasn't actually experienced it because there's a moment where all of a sudden you just realize that you can see. And, and when you realize that you can see, it ends up uh, that you have been able to see for a while and you can't pinpoint the actual moment that you could actually see. It's, it's a gradual and slow, like painstakingly slow, imperceptibly slow process. But then once you perceive it, it's like it speeds up. It accelerates. It magnifies. Actually, there's three technical dawns. There's no one dawn. There's a dawn that's called astronomical dawn when the sun is 18 degrees below the horizon. And uh, you can, that's when the first light, you're able to just discern that there is light. But that's not dawn. That's only the first stage of dawn. Uh, after that is what they call nautical dawn. It's called nautical dawn because a sailor at this point, can discern the horizon. It's light enough for the sailor to see the horizon. Turns out that happens about 12 degrees below the horizon. So the sun is still below the horizon when you get to nautical dawn. And then there's a third layer of dawn that's called civil dawn. It's called that because once it gets that light, it is light enough to do stuff. It's light enough that you can see and, and do stuff, but the sun is still below the horizon. It's six degrees below the horizon. So from this astronomical dawn to nautical dawn to civil dawn, and then it's sunrise, then you can see the sun. Uh, it's, a, it's a slow and, and gradual process as our world moves from darkness into light. It's not an all of a sudden the sun is up thing. Like when your mom used to walk into your room when you're still asleep and just turn on the light all of a sudden. Rude, by the way. Uh, but when that happens in from dark to light all of a sudden, you squint and you have to flinch back and you have to shield your eyes, right? Dawn doesn't happen suddenly like that. Dawn happens gradually over time. Now Isaiah describes the arrival of Christ as the arrival of light into darkness. What Shayla read for us so beautifully earlier describes a people who have walked in darkness, in deep darkness, as a matter of fact. They've walked there for so long that their eyes have become accustomed to it. Isaiah names the tasks that are to be done by this Messiah who is on the way. These are enormous tasks, breaking the rod of the oppressor, destroying the equipment of warfare completely. These are enormous and, and grand tasks that the Messiah is to accomplish. It's a big, bold vision of light shining in darkness. And yet, at the culminating point of Isaiah's prophecy, it's just a kid. <laughs> It's a kid, for a child will be born to you. Are you kidding me? A child? I was expecting a warrior. I was expecting a king. I was expecting someone to take care of it. No, no, it's a kid. It's a child. This light that Isaiah speaks of is not a blinding spotlight. It's a flickering candle. Why does it have to be that way? Why does Christ come as a child? Well, maybe it's because we've been walking in darkness so long that if the light were to come suddenly and, 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 and so brightly that it would, we would flinch away from it. We would squint and cringe and it would actually do us harm. But it's not grand and glorious. It's a baby. In the darkness, a flickering candle is all you need. A flickering candle can illuminate an entire room. Grace works the same way, by the way. The grace of God is perceived slowly, gently. It's a process that illuminates our lives little by little, just like the dawn, just like the, the line in Silent Night with the dawn of redeeming grace. 
Grace is a dawning, a gradual process. And borrowing from those scientific terms I mentioned earlier, there's a kind of astronomical grace, a grace where you can just barely discern the slightest hint of light. And as it turns out, as soon as you discern light, you realize that it's been there all along. That first glimpse of where you think that there may actually be hope for me. Prevenient grace that comes before we're even aware of it. Then there's a kind of a, a natural, great, uh, a nautical grace, if you will. That, that grace that allows us to discern the horizon, right? It, it's a, a touch point. It's an orienting location. If we know where the horizon is, we know where we are. God's grace justifies us as a touch point for who we are. As a reminder of our identity, God's grace is a horizon, an orienting location that aligns us with God and aligns us with God's priorities. And yet the dawn is not yet complete because there's this civil grace, if you will, a grace that illuminates our lives sufficiently so that we can do stuff. Grace to act, grace to be, grace to live as God desires that we live, the sanctifying grace that continues to work within us to empower us to our Christian discipleship. God's grace works before we are aware. It orients us to God's priorities and it enables us to act. Grace does not come all at once, for if it did, it would overwhelm us. We cannot imagine what a gift it is to receive this grace from God. It would terrify us, it would overwhelm us, and we would flinch, we would cringe, we would squint our eyes. No, Jesus does not enter the world as a full-grown warrior prepared to do battle. He comes as a baby in the most vulnerable and fragile way possible. The birth of Jesus is not attended by celebrities and dignitaries, people of power and position, but rather the shepherds who come to see him rough and humble, dirt still under their fingernails from being out with the sheep all night. The birth of Jesus doesn't blind us. It doesn't overwhelm us. It's not the glaring light of a spotlight. Jesus' birth is a candle, a single flickering cam candle in the middle of our darkened lives. Our expectations for God's arrival may be grand and glorious. There may be fireworks and fanfare. You might be a, a Clark Griswold in your neighborhood putting all the lights on all the places. But the birth of Jesus goes way beyond our expectations. It always does. And it doesn't go beyond our expectations by being bigger and bolder and brighter than we expect it to be. It actually goes beyond our expectations by being smaller and more ordinary and bathed in kind of a soft glow. It has to be that way because we've walked in darkness for so long that we've become accustomed to it. Life happens more often in small, ordinary moments that can be rather dark and dreary from time to time, and we just need a little light to get us through. Sin is darkness because it keeps us from seeing the face of God. Grace is light because it illuminates God's face and makes it possible for us not only to see God, but also to live the abundant, everlasting life that God offers. When I was a kid, I went to Harper Chapel United Methodist Church in Osage Beach, Missouri, and one of my Sunday school teachers there was a woman named Nell Rogers. Nell was a retired, son, uh, re retired school teacher, uh, and she was, I think, 127 years old when I was there as a kid. Um, and I loved listening to Nell's stories. She had so many wonderful stories, and I remember one in particular she told about walking home from school. Nell lived far out of town and through kind of a wooded area, and she walked to school to get to that one-room schoolhouse in town. Uh, and during the, at the beginning of the school year, that was no big deal because it was plenty light enough, but as it got closer to Christmas and the sun went down in the middle of the afternoon, apparently, uh, it became more and more darker and darker on her way home. And she told a story about one particular day in which she had to stay late after school, not because she got in trouble. Heavens, no, Nell would never get in trouble. But because she was practicing, the kids were practicing the Christmas program. 
So it was dark already by the time she left the school building. She wasn't a problem through town. She found her way through town, but she got to that place in the road where she had to turn off and go through that wooded area to get to her house over there, and, and it was dark. I mean, it was dark. No moon that night. It's one of those winter dark nights that are just super dark. And she looked, and she was looking through the trees, and she was trying to figure out where she was and how to get there when she saw a light. She saw a tiny light, and she looked at it, and she fixed her eyes on it, and she walked toward it, and she had to move to dodge the trees and the limbs and step over roots and stuff, but she never took her eyes off that light. And she made it, because that light, of course, was her front window, where her mom had placed a lamp right in the window so that she could find her way through the woods. Now, there's two sides of that story, right? There's the side of, of Nell walking through the woods with her eyes fixed on that light, knowing that light would get her through this dark place. But there's also her mom thinking about her beforehand and wanting her not to be afraid during that experience, so putting a light in the front window for her so that she would be able to find her way home. Grace is a light because it illuminates our lives even with one tiny flickering candle. And it's a light that can be shared, such as the quality of a candle. You can give your light to someone else and it doesn't go away. It multiplies. May we not only keep our eyes focused on God's grace to get us through the dark places of our own lives, but may we always remember to put a lamp in the window, to offer grace to others, to help them as well. Would you please pray with me? God, your grace is not a blinding spotlight. It's a flickering candle getting us through the darkest places. They are radiant beams from Christ's holy face that come with a dawn of redeeming grace that ultimately transform the world. We love you. We pray these things to you in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.